Good morning. Good morning. Always catch people by surprise. <laughs> Let's get going. We've got a full day ahead of us. We've got all kinds of things to do and say and pray. So uh, we're going to begin uh, by, with uh, welcoming the sacred by inviting the search committee to come forward <laughs> and give us a little update on what's going on there. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you so much to those of you who were able to respond to the pastoral search survey. We ended up receiving uh, 117 responses. So that was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. Yeah. And 75 people made it through the entire survey, which you know was, uh, which was a long one. Um, we had people spent uh, close to 15 minutes per survey, uh, and there were so many uh, insights related to our hopes and dreams for the church, uh, the opportunities and challenges that people see that a new pastor will be um, able to capitalize on and what the qualities are that we're looking for in our next spiritual leader. So it, it was gr it's great. There are over 300 write-in comments. So we're going to be able to spend a lot of time looking through those comments, getting insights. Uh, I have had an opportunity to review many of them, and it's actually quite inspiring to read them. Uh, and so uh, that information from those surveys is going to be going into the development of a church profile, which uh, John is going to speak about. It's, it's how we present ourselves to uh, potential new pastors, and then as a search committee, what we'll do, because there's so much rich information in the survey, we'll also think through what the next steps are in terms of sharing that information with uh, the church community. Who's there? Oops. Hi. Uh, as uh, Sarah described, the survey that um, was gathered uh, or sent out to gather information about our church and uh, so that we can fill out what's called a church profile, um, which is basically an advertisement which we placed on the UCC website indicating that we are searching for a pastor. And uh, when it's completed, the profile will include information about the history of the church, who the congregation is right now, uh, both, both demographically and in their faith journey, um, how our church serves our surrounding communities, our hopes for the future of the church, and the roles that a new minister will fill to help us meet our hopes and forward our faith journey and our service to others. So far we've been collecting information, uh, kind of background information about demographics, um, age groups in the church, uh, but also the UCC has sent us information. They do a search for uh, a 15 mile radius, we asked them to do a 15 mile radius around the church of Age of, ages of people, uh, what type of pro professions they are, it's all based on a census information actually. So the UCC sent us that background information. And they also sent us a, what they call an 11 year um, history of the church and it's all our finances, budgets for the last 11 years. So that information will be incorporated into uh, our, our profile uh, as, a, an, a, as an appendix, but it'll also support the narrative that we are going to write. We're going to write kind of a story about the church. So it gives the minister coming in a feeling for who we are, where we've been, what we hope for the future, and how the minister uh, who's applying for the position can uh, support our, our faith journeys. Uh, we hope to get the um, profile done in the next couple months. Um, you know, the holidays are here, so we won't be doing a lot probably in the next couple weeks. But uh, after that, we will submit it to uh, uh, Reverend uh, Gordon um, Rankin yes. at the UCC <laughs> conference and for his review, and then it'll be posted on the website, and uh, we'll go from there. And we'll keep you informed and 
As Sarah said, thanks for filling out the survey. It was, it's a big help and very enlightening. And uh, please keep your thoughts coming in to us uh, individually. If you, see, if you see people on the search committee and would like to have comments, feel free to talk to us. Thank you. Whoa, thank you. And now I think Andy has something to say to us about the anthem today. Good morning. Uh, today's anthem, uh, the title of which is found on page three in your bulletin, it looks a little funny because it is a little funny. Adam Lay E. Boonden, it's um, in Middle English. And so I wanna tell you what the, what the words mean and it'll give you just a, a tiny bit of uh, background on it. In medieval theology, it was said that Adam and Eve and their progeny and everyone moving forwards, after their death, they lay in a bond. They were bound until the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. 4,000 winters, they thought that's how long it was. So the words are, Adam lay ebunden, Adam lay bound, Boonden in a bond, 4,000 winters thought he not too long, and all was for an apple, an apple that he took, as clerks found, written in their book. But you'll hear us sing, as Clarkus Finden, written in their book. Nay, had the apple taken been, in other words, if the apple had never been taken, Nay, the apple taken been, nay had never our lady a been heavenly queen. Our lady would never be the queen of heaven if the apple had not been taken. So, blessed be the time that apple taken was. And therefore, we will sing Deo Gracias, which is thanks to God. So let us prepare ourselves for worship with the proclamation of God's presence through light in the morning prelude.
Today we will be adding the lighting of the candle of joy. We pray for joy this day. We pray, pray for, for joy, joy this day. day. We open to see each place. We, we open, open to, to see, see the sacred reflected in all things. As a gift of holy presence, we open to see each moment as a gift of holy presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery, lighting the way to joy. This, this is, is the gift of the Christ ministry, lighting the way to joy. Can you join me in the unison prayer of love? Living, loving God, Christ's mystery, spirit of joy, we give you thanks for this sacred place and online space for gathering and worship. As we take in the joy you offer, may we be a reflection of your light, expanding the sacred space of right here into the uncommon place of everywhere. Amen. Amen. May we all join together and sing, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence, the Red Hymnal 107.
may be seated. Let's see, do I have any young people who like to come up front and sit with me? There you go back there, I see you. Hi, Ella. Thank you. I better get my seat before it gets taken. <laughs> Excuse me. You can come around here if you want. It's easier to see for you. Yeah. It's okay, the floor's clean. Right there. Just right there. I'm not messing with you. I'd sit there, but I can't get up. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if you have noticed things changing around here in the sanctuary. You notice anything? What have you noticed? It's decorated, that's right. What else? Let's see, are there any new decorations we should think about? There's a whole lot of lights, that's right. There's a whole lot of lights. Um, but if you follow me, we're going to go see a new addition to our decorations. What's this? Can you see yourself in there? Look at that. There you all are. It is a mirror. And what about this? This is all brand new. Too. It's beautiful. And do you see what's up there? Snowflakes. Snowflakes. Yeah. The cross is up there, yes. And those snowflakes have sparkles on them. And when you come here on Christmas Eve, everything is going to be sparkling and beautiful. And we can worship god there so all right so see everything is sparkling isn't it even my necklace is sparkling yeah let's go back and sit down well we've been through a light journey these last couple of weeks you remember last week what we did we shined this in the light and it's sparkled so beautifully. I think the lights in the ceiling helped too. And we had those refracting um, little discs. Thank you. <laughs> the refracting little disc and we saw all the colors going on the floor. That was really cool, huh? Now, I had something else, but I guess. I wanted to tell you, read to you this little passage from, from the Bible. It's in the Gospel of John. It says, Jesus is the light of the world. And that's what we've been, we've been studying the last few weeks in Advent. And this is what Jesus said. I am the light of the world Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me. Now, when you went up to the mirror up there, you saw yourselves in there, didn't you? Well, I have something for you here. Oh, I thought these were going to be opened up for me. Here we go. <laughs> you want to take one and... Oh, yeah, there's a line on the back. It's kind of open that. Here you go. Pass them on down. Okay, yeah, if you don't like the color you got, you can trade it. We need one more? One more. How about a purple one? You got that for your brother? He likes blue. Okay. Well, I don't want any flipping out going on here. Okay. <laughs> 
did you get, guys get some? William, come here, come see me. You don't want to come sit close to me? Um, Jesus said, I, thank you, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And we've been talking about light. He said it right in the Bible. And the light, this is the season we celebrate the light coming into the world. That's when Jesus was born. He's the light. And he came into the world, and that's why, that's why we have it here. Um, now, you saw your reflections in the mirror up there, and I've given you little hand mirrors, right? Open those up and tell me what you see. What do you see? You see your head? Okay. Anybody else? What do you see? <laughs> yes, with a mirror you can see behind you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you can see your little moose in there too. So mirrors mirrors reflect what's standing in front of it, right? And sometimes it's you in front of the mirror. But now our job is to be the mirror. How can we do that? Be the mirror. It means that we are the mirror so that when people look at us, they're going to see Jesus' goodness and his light. And people know that by... Is that my glasses? Um, people know that by the way we look at them with love, the way we smile to be friendly, and the way we love them, give them a hug and say, I love you. Those are the things Jesus teaches us to do. And he was the light, and he shined on us, and we became his mirror, and we shine it out to all the people. What do you think about that? I think that's something to work on this week, huh? Yeah, okay. Let's do that. So, um, let's see, Ava, if you could bring those to the back and put them on the table, then others can take a, a mirror. Um, so let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to be his light. Amen. There you go. You can go to Sunday school now. That's a good idea. So, friends, the busyness of the holiday season can overrun the sense of the sacred. The irony is that setting apart time for connection with the sacred gets pushed aside in order to create the obstacles of what is supposed to be the season of celebrating the presence of the holy. So we are reading scripture each week that's taken a different part of the, the message of Christmas. And some of it is prophecy and some of it is gospel, but all of it is helpful. First scripture reading comes from Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. If you have your Bible open, you will see that Isaiah's words are written like a poem or like a song, the way we might write song lyrics down. 
The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong and do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be opened. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of, of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, where we've been flipping around telling different parts of the story. Today is a familiar, <clears throat> excuse me, passage. Um, it's Mary. She's been visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who's in her sixth month of pregnancy, and Mary has just learned that she also is expecting a child. And John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb, when he, heard Mary's voice, he leaped in her womb, and all kinds of excitement broke forth, and Mary began to sing, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away emptied. He has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever, this is the promise of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so the church <clears throat> every year marks the time before the birth of Christ when we turn our focus to the four lofty and prayerful themes of Advent. We light a candle and pray for hope to be revived. We light two candles and pray that love will be shared with everyone. 
We light three candles and ready ourselves for the sensation of joy to come to us. And next week we will light four candles and open ourselves to the possibilities of peace. In today's reading from the Gospel of Luke, we are looking at Mary's song. Luke 146 on is commonly known, and you know it, as perhaps the Magnificat. Yes, the Magnificat. The Magnificat means, my soul magnifies the Lord in Latin. Now, I doubt Mary ever spoke Latin. But the Latin gives us insight into the joy behind her words. So what is Mary's song about? Mary's song is a song of praise. She is not just sharing her thoughts with her cousin Elizabeth. She is declaring from the depth of her soul that the Lord is great. And her spirit is rejoicing with the news that has come to her. Mary's song is a song of faith. The lyrics of her song are not just words spoken in a moment of happiness and then forgotten. The truth is that her song speaks of who she is and how deep her faith is and lives on. Mary's song is also a song of joy. In verses 46 and 47, she says, My soul praises the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You see, Mary's faith is rooted in Jewish tradition We can surmise that she has come from a devout Jewish family and that she believes in the God of her ancestors. Mary's song is a song of blessings. In the last four verses of her song, she speaks of the wondrous things that God has done for her ancestors, for her and for all who will believe. Her recognition of the mighty deeds God has performed and the mercies he has given to the people of Israel. All of that is significant. And that's what Isaiah is singing about from the Old Testament passage. It's the return of the Jews to their homeland after many, many years of exile. They've been brought home again so you know what? Mary's song is revolutionary. Hear the revolutionary expressions of praise given by a young girl who is carrying the one and only Son of God. Listen to her words in verse 51. He has done a mighty deed with his arm. He has scattered the proud. Why? Why is this revolutionary? It's because she's speaking about something that causes sin in humans. It's something that gets in the way. It's pride. And she's saying, he has scattered the proud. They're not top dog anymore. So why is that revolutionary? It's because pride is one thing that seems to get in between God and us the most. In 21st century society, we hold to a lot of pride we tend to turn a blind eye to those in need and refuse to ask for help when we need it. Last night at Wolfboro Serves, we had one child who 
was inconsolable. So that crying went on and on and on. And finally I said, all right, go in there. And I went in there. I got down on the floor with him. We shared a pretzel. And then he was almost my best friend. But he had a little runny nose and he got stuff in his mouth and then tried to put it in my mouth. And I was like, I know I'm going to get sick from this. <laughs> but I'm fine. But that child bit then began to enjoy the evening. And he was running with the best of them by the time his parents came. Just take someone getting down on the floor with a person who's in need. And that's what Jesus has done. He came down on the floor with us, became one of us. And that's how God works. When God wants something done, he becomes one of us so that we might understand. Secondly, we can look at Mary's song in a social revolutionary frame of mind. She sings that God has toppled the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. Now Mary knows she is nothing special to the eyes of the world. In fact, she's pregnant and not married. She's a person you know, what do you call that? Non grata? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a shame upon the mark of the village. She knows she's not much. She sings anyway. God has seen fit to use a poor girl to bring the greatest gift to humanity. And we can learn a few things from this. Our society puts a lot of importance on prestige and wealth. We've internalized the idea that the more we have, the better we are. The better we are in intellect, the better we are in status, the better we are in everything. But God is proving that the world's labels and prestige are not important to God. God is looking at the heart of a person as he did with Mary, as he does with you and me. Lastly, in this song, there is an economic revolution. Luke 1.53 says, He has satisfied the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. If we are a Christian society, and, and I'm talking about America, feeling that it is a Christian society, why then do we have hungry people? Why then do we have unsheltered people, invisible people, standing right in front of us? Now, having wealth is not a bad thing. You are blessed. The issue is how we choose to use our wealth to glorify God. I have watched you come alive as you've built community and you have a single purpose, you know, to find your next leader. But your next leader will teach you or bring you closer to Jesus. The Magnificat teaches us about if we are open to it, our personal walk with Christ. 
This is powerful, yet often gets hidden in darker corners. Many are uncomfortable with the language here. Yet unless we are willing to open ourselves to let Christ meet us right here where we are in all our regular everyday glory, unless we're willing to do that, why bother with Christianity at all? We may find Mary's story hard to believe. I don't believe in the virgin birth. Couldn't have happened. Well, yeah, it could. And the gospel lyrics are hard to sing. Yet this is exactly the place where our faith expressed in our works is the reflection of Christ in the world. All of us are mirrors. All of us reflect Christ by how we live, what we do and say. And I see that happening here. I see it happening at Brewster. Don't tell him I said that, but <laughs> you know, Last night, there were eight different groups of teens out servicing Wolfboro in different capacities, helping people all over this town. That's amazing to me. There is that answering of the call. Let's try giving thanks to God for allowing those situations to happen, that we can learn from our places beneath the cross of Jesus, that we can change lives for the better. Mary's song is an inspiring piece, piece of scripture. Her words are profound in the face of what she was about to do. We don't know really what she was thinking about pregnancy. We don't have a written word that describes her fear of what others will think of her or how they will treat her. All we have are these magnificent words that reveal her praises to God. My soul magnifies the Lord. Is this explanation not more than enough to know in our hearts and minds that God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life? Hope, love, joy, and peace qualities Christ brings to us in this sacred space, alive with light and mirror and reflection. Friends, this is our Advent journey. I'm so glad we're on it together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is an insert in your bulletin. My soul cried out with a joyful shout.
seated. Don and Wendy will come to you with your prayer concerns or celebrations. Does anyone have something they'd like to share? Sarah. You're going to be sick of hearing from me. Um, <laughs> um, I'd like to just raise up my um, stepdad in prayer. He um, uh, broke his hip last week. He has had to have a partial hip replacement, and he's in the hospital, and uh, he's really struggling. So I just ask for your prayers. Thank you. Okay, over here, and then if you can go to Debbie. Uh uh, I'd like to ask for prayers for uh, both sons-in-law. One was supposed to be here this weekend with their family, and uh, um, he got COVID the night before he was coming, so better the day before than the next day is the way we look at it. Uh, and then a second son-in-law is having surgery um, on Tuesday, so we pray for good results from that. Thank you, Patty Mac. Debbie. I I would ask for prayers for my granddaughter, Allie. She is stuck in Philadelphia at a friend's house, very ill with COVID. Uh, we're hoping she'll be well enough to drive up the highway for Christmas. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, over here to Betty. I would just like to thank everyone who's responsible for this beautiful place we're in today. It is absolutely breathtaking. Uh, That's Wendy <laughs> and the deacons. Wendy and the deacons. Someone else? Mike says we have to be firm with these mics. Tell them who's boss here. <laughs> Let's be together in prayer. Oh Lord, your arm is strong. You lifted up the poor and the lowly, and strength comes from them. And the world you created from the beginning, it's about to turn once more that the word and love of Christ will be reflected in all of our hearts and our faces and in our hands, the work that we do, that the world may see the way to turn. Help us to keep our own eyes on Jesus as we await the incarnation. Let us also be reflectors of the great miracle of God made flesh. Those we have lifted up before you in our time of prayer, Lord, <clears throat> we give them special loft to your heart. In the silence now, hear our in-depth prayers from our hearts. And we conclude our prayer time together with St. Patrick's prayer. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, 
Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise. now invited to uh, return our generosity to God who has been so generous to us. Let the ushers wait upon us. Please join me in our unison prayer of dedication. There are gifts of joy today, and we dedicate our offerings to you, O God. Your glory shines around us, increasing week by week. Inspire us to continue the journey to Bethlehem as we sing of the great joy that is for all people. Amen. And you may be seated. Our 
anth our closing hymn is Angels We Have Heard on High. calling louder. God loved us by becoming us. This means we are already reflecting the sacred. It is incumbent upon us now to take the sacred into the world so that one day there can be joy on earth. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and the Spirit of joy, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Amen.